Let's get into something. There's this small thing, this small little thing inside of Maya. Forget all the flame wars about Maya versus Blender, Maya versus Max. There's something within Maya that puts Maya users themselves on one side of the fence or the other. It's about as divisive of a thing as I've ever seen amongst Maya tech artists. This thing's called Pymail. Before we get into why it drives a wedge between people, first, we should talk about what it is. Pymail is simple. It's a Python framework, much like Maya.cmds or OpenMaya. It's just another way to interact with Maya through Python code. But if you've ever used either Maya.cmds or OpenMaya, you would have found yourself scratching your head more than a few times or flipping a couple of tables out of frustration. Neither Maya.cmds nor open Maya feel very Pythonic. You could say that Maya.cmds is just a clone of Mel. It doesn't offer any advantages over using Mel, other than the fact that you're coding inside of Python, which let's be honest, is miles better than Mel. With Python, you have access to the ocean of libraries that have been written for Python already. But the Maya.cmds module itself is the same as Mel. After writing enough code in it, everything just looks and feels as if you wrote it in Mel. Carries all the baggage of Mel. What about Open Maya API? Surely this solves these issues. I mean, in one way it does, but it comes with its own baggage. It's full of C++ style conventions, so it's not very Pythonic either. Not to mention it's much more convoluted than the simple Maya.cmds module despite being much more powerful. This is where PyML comes in. In fact, this is the reason PyML exists, to bridge the gap between Python and Maya in a way that's familiar and simple, but also robust and powerful, but most importantly, Pythonic. So I've been saying Pythonic a lot. What does that mean? Every programming language has its own style, flow and idioms. To be idiomatically Python means a few things. Taking advantage of classes, inheritance, magic methods, or dunders as they're known. Also implementing instance methods, abstracting away complexity, and working more high level. These are some of the hallmarks of Python. It's hard to describe what Pythonic means in just one sentence, but it's also equally easy to see when something isn't Pythonic. Neither Maya.cmds nor OpenMaya are Pythonic. One resembles Mel, whilst the other resembles C++. Coding in PyMel feels much more familiar. It's the Python that we all know and love. Once you start getting the hang of it, you can easily make the switch to coding using other frameworks, whether it's as simple as hopping over to coding inside of Nuke or Houdini, or making a giant leap over coding for the web using frameworks like Flask. You won't feel like a fish out of water. The same applies the other way around. If you've come from a background where you've used Python extensively, you'll feel more at home right away if you started using PyMail. PyMail is object-oriented. Object-oriented programming itself has become a highly debated topic as of late. Whether it's good or bad, that's for the experts to decide. What's abundantly clear though, is that there's still a place for object-oriented programming. Python inside of Maya is a great example of this. We interact with objects and manipulate them inside of the viewport, outliner, and node graphs. It makes total sense to treat them as objects inside of Python as well. In Maya.cmds, you're constantly storing and passing around strings. What if you decide to rename your object partway through the code? Well, you'd have to make sure that you don't forget to keep track of the new name now, because if you forget, well, your code is busted. PyMail stores an actual reference to the object itself in memory, so if the name of your object changes, you don't have to overwrite your current variable with new data. You just carry on as if nothing has happened. Going from procedural programming to object-oriented programming is a shift in mindset. Another reason to use PyMail is for cleanliness. You shouldn't need to write code like this to get the parent of this cube 
then move the parent 3 units to the right in Translate X. Instead with PyMail it looks like this. You see how it reads left to right like you would expect? And how much shorter and clearer it looks? This is because PyMail treats objects as, well, objects. Cleanliness is very often overlooked for new programmers. It cannot be understated how important clean code really is, not just for yourself if you revisit the code three years later, but for your team if you work in a team environment. There's nothing more painful than someone trying to dissect your messy code to fix a small bug that should have only taken minutes to fix, but has instead taken hours because no one can bloody understand your flaming garbled turd of code. Typing. This is something that's more advanced and honestly a little intimidating for a lot of new Python users. Typing, type checking, and typecasting is a way to ensure that the objects you're creating and passing around are compatible with the functions you're writing. PyMail takes this to a new level. Every object has a node type or data type. This lets you do cool things such as check if a particular object is an instance of a particular type. Like in this example here, where I filter only objects that are geometry, and unlike my.cmds equivalent, which just looks at a specific object type, PyMail allows you to compare objects to parent types, so anything that is a polygon or a NURB surface would pass the test. On top of what you can do with the code itself, having well-defined types allow other programs such as PyCharm to intelligently check types and ensure that inputs you pass to your functions are the proper types that the function is expecting. Basically, it lets you take your error checking whilst you code to the next level. The final reason you should use PyMail is that it's ridiculously easy to switch over. You can start by porting over your my.cmds code with a simple find and replace and slowly figure out all the nice little advantages of PyMail over time. We have a video showing how easy the switch can be, which I'll link in the description. So with all these amazing advantages, why are people still hesitant to use PyMail? And why do some people feel so strongly against it? I honestly think many just haven't used it enough to experience all the benefits of it, and they are too quick to hate. But there are some legitimate reasons why you might not want to use PyMail. Speed is a big reason. A common reason you see against PyMail is that it's slow. It takes a few seconds to initialize and import into memory when you run it in a new Maya session. Even worse than this though, is that because there is so much going on in the background with regards to wrapping objects and the many levels of inheritance, it can perform really poorly in situations where you need to iterate over hundreds of thousands of objects. This is especially true when you need to do component level operations that affect faces, edges, or vertices, PyMail goes so far as to wrap vertices as objects, meaning that you can do cool things like move vertices like so. But it also means it takes much longer to loop over these objects and perform certain operations. Because everything is an object in PyMail, and every object has so many levels of inheritance. Each object has a lot of resource overhead. Storing or generating hundreds of thousands of objects and looping over them can easily blow out your RAM if you're not careful. For this same reason, PyMail is not ideal for working with components. Finally, because everything is an object in PyMail, it makes it difficult to pass data around between machines. Whilst this isn't such a big deal when you're writing scripts that individuals are going to use, when you start writing scripts that require data to be transferred to a farm and passed along from machine to machine during execution, it becomes much more difficult to manage. But there are ways around this problem. PyMail object data can be flattened into a simpler data structure, such as a dictionary, before being sent off and then reconstructed back into a PyMail object on the other end. Another more advanced approach would be to pickle the object using something like the pickle module. Pickling will essentially convert a Python object 
to binary data so it can be reconstructed as a Python object with minimal data loss. These techniques are known as serialization and is a common way to format data to be easily transferable between machines during execution. Knowing all this, it's safe to say that PyML is awesome and those that shy away from it do so in the wrong way. If speed is a real concern, you should be using C++ anyway. If coding elegantly, efficiently, and cleanly is something you care about, you should consider coding in PyML. Just keep in mind some of the pitfalls. Maybe don't use it for manipulating components and you should be good. Finally, I just want to say thank you to the awesome geniuses behind PyML, Chad Dombrova and Paul Molotowicz, who are over at Luma Pictures, where I actually work. And yes, I might be a little bit biased about PyML because of this reason, but I have seen firsthand how powerful it can be when used right.